one of my favorite pieces of gear, especially for like bushcraft camping when I don't have to worry so much about weight, is the squirrel cooker. And I don't have a squirrel, but I do have some steak. So I'm gonna use that squirrel cooker to cook this steak, and I'm also gonna make some coffee with it. Uh, so I thought I'd share with you kind of what I do as far as seasoning any red meat, uh, my steaks, uh, lamb, uh, anything else. And first things first is leave as much fat as you can on it. I actually have a cutting board that I'm gonna show you after I do this, but I feel committed to this right now. There's one slab. But uh, I've also got a cutting board I can show you real quick that fits right inside my bush pot, really handy. Pull that dude out. I should tell you that this is not safe food handling procedures, so don't try to do this at a restaurant or anything like that, but I'm gonna cook it. Handy little cutting board. Cut myself off a slab about the size of a squirrel. That's pretty good. Catch. Intermission. So my seasoning that I use on all my beef, I use two different spices. One is adobo with black pepper, and the other is, is seasoned salt, like a Lowry's seasoned salt works really well. It's typically what I'll get. And I keep those inside my backpacker's pantry. So anytime I'm out, I have my spices available. But uh, you can see this one's kind of gnarly. What had happened was the greens, I think, got stuck inside the thread, so it wouldn't open, so I had to kind of get at it with a Swiss Army knife. Uh, so now I just have a handy little shaker. So I usually go about half adobo, half seasoned salt on one side. Give it a little dusting. Like so. A little smoke in the eyes for extra flavor. A little bit of seasoned salt. Very precise measurements, kind of like I make my coffee. Rub that in a little. Flip it over. Might as well start with the seasoned salt since I've got it out. little adobo. Whoa, a lot of adobo. A little more than a little. There we go. Rub that in, it'll all come out. That will buff out. That looks pretty good. So I just let those kind of sit. And both of those are osmotic, so they'll kind of pull uh, moisture out of the meat. And they're also going to uh, kind of mix in. Smoke in the eyes? Oh yeah. Take a break. We got all emotional about this steak. Uh. Can we get a tissue? Tissue? No tissues. It'll only make it worse. You put it in the fire and it'll make more smoke. All right, so yeah, it's an osmotic, so it's gonna pull the moisture out and then it's gonna kind of mix with that and make a nice coating on there. So that's what I do for all of my red meats, uh, just adobo and seasoned salt. So that's my secret to making delicious steaks. Then for the coffee, this is my meat fork. That meat fork I should tell you about real quick. This is actually two of my crooked awls that I keep in my toolkit. And I keep two for the purpose of making it into a meat fork later. I can take those two opposing drive it down in some wood and lash that tight, and I've got a nice meat fork.
but that's just two alls, so that's multifunctional. For my coffee, again, as you might suspect, it's pretty precise measurements. I figure for about a 32 ounce um, stainless steel bottle that I use, it's about four spoonfuls or so. So this is probably bigger than that, we'll say. So I just throw some coffee in there. That's about four. That's four. Five, six, seven, and we'll call it eight. Pretty precise. Top that off with water, and then I'll kind of steep that over the fire as well. So I'll have steak on one side, coffee on the other. <laughs> 